everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with Ingenious. Today's host, Brian Slayman, will be presenting today. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to submit them in the question box, and Brian will answer them at the end of today's presentation. Brian, I'm finished for now. Please go ahead and take it over. Okay, thank you very much, Julie, and thanks uh, for everybody joining this, today's webinar. Um, as Julie mentioned, any questions uh, that you have, uh, save to the end, and I'll, I'll try to answer them for you. Uh, but with that said, um, I'll begin. Uh, let's see here. So what we'll cover is YNG solutions, uh, sales support, the industries, applications, customers, and um, product solutions. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go high level on uh, a majority of the information to kind of keep it short and uh, give you enough time for uh, questions. But just in regards to Ingenius, so Ingenius has been around for some time, uh, since 99 in the U.S. We've been manufacturing since the late 70s, uh, so we've been around uh, in the wireless communication RF technology for some time. We do have a whole line of um, uh, wired uh, switches, PoE switches and gigabit switches. Um, and we'll have more switches come out in the near future. But, you know, we went from a wireless only company to a wireless and wired company. So we're doing networking in general, just con connectivity. So we have a lot of experience um, thus far in manufacturing those types of products um, and a number of different other products. Um, and Genus is also known for a lot of OEM work that, uh, that's being done in the, uh, in the industry. So we have tons of experience there. Um, what we're really known for is robust wireless features for class leading performance, really versatile user friendly centralized management um, platform, and also as normal, you may or may not know, we're, we have a, a very affordable total cost of ownership. Um, as I mentioned, or I did mention, we're our original uh, equipment manufacturer, so um, we have a lot of control over the components that we use. Uh, we have a lot of control over the actual manufacturing processes. Um, so we're able to come in at a very uh, aggressive price point while still uh, providing that class leading uh, performance. And uh, you'll see that along <clears throat> across all of our, um, our solutions, such as the Neutron Series solutions, our Electron Series solutions, our point-to-point uh, -point solution and stations specifically, and even our uh, DuraPhone product, which you may or may not be aware of, but that, that's our phone product. We are definitely recognized within the industry uh, among multiple third party um, writers, bloggers, uh, uh, different magazines, uh, review sites um, for having, um, you know, for having uh, a very high performance business class type of access point at a very aggressive price point. Uh, we've had multiple um, uh, companies or reviewers come to us and test our products, such as PC, uh, PC Mag and Benchmark. Um, they have specifically tested our 11AC indoor and outdoor products and gave us high ratings. Uh, cool Tool Awards gave us a high rating on our Neutron Series, which is our centrally managed um, platform. Uh, they give us a high rating. Uh, we're recognized uh, within NPD data as being within the top 10. Um, of access points being sold uh, worldwide. Uh, so, you know, we have a large market share in the access point uh, uh, industry, and uh, so there's a lot of uh, different types of customers that can use our products. Um, just a little more about Ingenious. Uh, you're, at the end of the day, you're, uh, you're working with experts. Uh, like I said, we've been in the industry for a very long time, and we've worked actually with Microcom for a very long time. I remember um, signing the first agreements with uh, Microcom for, uh, it, it was a long time ago when we had just 11B products that actually did very, very well in the marketplace. Um, so we've been around for a while and been working with Microcom. So, you know, as I've worked with Microcom, I've learned that they have a, um, a wide variety of technical people on staff and that work with uh, many of different vendors, but they have an ex expertise and they're backed by us who are also ex experts uh, within the Wi-Fi and wired uh, industry. So we're really here to help. So you have access to wireless experts uh, through Ingenious. You can um, access our Ingenious community. That gives you direct access to our software engineers, our hardware engineers, um, our product line management uh, group, such as myself and uh, my team. 
um, along with our, our field applications engineers. Our field applications engineers are actually certified uh, experts. Um, we have three uh, main uh, 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 field applications engineers. Two of those three are experts within the industry. I think we have uh, number 171. They actually number the number of experts within the U.S. We have number 171 and um, 201. Um, so we do have them on staff, and they help our customers or microcoms customers actually deploy products into anywhere from the simplest design all the way to the most complicated design. So uh, we're here to support you in that. And then we have a line of customer service um, that will also support you. Uh, that's, that's the big thing with Ingenious. You can actually contact us, talk to us, and work with us, um, and we'll support you as much as possible. And we do that in uh, multiple levels. So uh, that's, that's your access to Ingenious when you're working with uh, Microcom and, and us. Uh, we have a very expansive uh, solution, um, and that provides an advantage to um, to Microcom and their customers. Um, we are we have a very vast uh, selection of indoor and outdoor access points. Uh, port density switches anywhere from uh, just normal non-PoE switches to PoE switches, and uh, 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 actually PoE injectors. So we can provide you a good, better, best um, options. When working in, uh, say, for example, you have an application or a customer uh, that has a particular deployment, uh, but they have multiple uh, restraints or budget um, restraints, restraints, I should say, or they have environmental hurdles, um, we're able to work within our line and provide that customer a specific, very specific uh, application or um, uh, solutions, or we can give them a range of solutions, and that's where that good, better, best comes into play. Uh, you know, the good might be fast, reliable, weather resilient, uh, to better being a little more faster speeds, uh, still reliable, weather resi resilient, um, and then best, highest bandwidth possible that we can provide to you, uh, reliable and very ruggedized equipment, and um, in some cases, so. Uh, we have a very expansive line for you to be able to uh, curtail that to uh, particular applications to particular customer types. Industries, applications, and customers. Uh, so product solutions. So wireless indoor access points that cover large home and small business scenarios. Um, as you may or may not know, Ingenious was the first market to have a high-powered uh, radio operating at 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and we uh, in a high-powered uh, telephone, for uh, uh, as an example, also. So we're known for high-powered radios, uh, high receive sensitivity radios, and all of our access points, all of our wireless devices, I should say. And what that equates to is it gives you better range, um, better coverage area, uh, better penetration through obstacles. And, and that ingredient is in all of our wireless uh, products that you find today. Um, so we have products that cover, um, that falls in a, a number of different uh, uh, applications, such as education, multi-dwelling units, uh, professional audio video, managed service providers, real estate, hospitality, healthcare, retail, residential. We're very horizontal um, in a lot of cases. A lot of different types of customers can use our products, so we find it falling into a number of different uh, industries. Specific applications such as these uh, categories of industry. So within the education um, arena, we do a lot of work with primary and secondary schools, a lot of private schools, Catholic, uh, Catholic specifically schools. Um, I would say universities we do very well with, but um, it's more the department than anything. It's not the whole university, but it's the departments within the universities. Um, so multi-dwelling units is another one. Student housing is a big one for us. Apartment complex and condos are also very, very large um, um, applications that we work with. Uh, we just started working with a system integrator that deploys hundreds of uh, POE switches and hundreds of access points into uh, student housing. And so um, that's just one one case that uh, that we've done within uh, multi-dwelling units. 
professional audio and video, this is uh, an increasing um, market for us, or uh, vertical, I should say, with us specifically in a residential commercial. Hospitality, we've been working in hospitality for a very long time, since probably day one since I've been here, in small hotels, hotels um, and into the resorts and larger hotels, and obviously, uh, you know, cafes, restaurants, and bars are um, within that um, area too. Healthcare, I think, our uh, the biggest industry within healthcare for ingenious is the assisted living, mainly for our Durofin product. Um, and a lot of those customers that use our Durofin product, uh, it's very easy for them to roll into our Wi-Fi um, access points and our uh, managed uh, access points and um, managed. Uh, switches. So the assisted living is adopting very well to our Wi-Fi products in, uh, in addition to them working with our Durofin products or telephone products. Retail, we do uh, a lot of mom and pop and boutique. Auto dealerships is probably one of the bigger ones. We do a lot of auto dealerships. Not too many pe people think about auto dealerships, but you can imagine on the phone side, um, there needs to be connectivity to the individual reps uh, in regards to phone calls and or if they have tablets, uh, uh, checking inventory, checking specs on particular cars, they, um, they use uh, tablets um, to actually uh, to, to get information from, the, uh, uh, from a Wi-Fi access point that's deployed outdoors. So we have a lot of um, auto dealerships, to give you an example. Real estate property management has uh, probably been the largest uh, 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 division within uh, real estate. Full coverage indoor access points. So, uh, as I mentioned, we're working with a hotel integrator that deploys in small, medium-sized hotels. Uh, they use our EAP line to supply total Wi-Fi coverage. Uh, we run into this instance uh, multiple times a day. Um, uh, we work with a lot of different system integrators. Pro AV integrators deploying in luxury homes use the EAP line as a um, um, audio video um, uh, backbone to the home's network. So, you know, as the homes are becoming smarter and smarter with all the uh, uh, Internet of Thing uh, devices, uh, they need some sort of backbone, a network backbone. And that's not only a wired backbone, but it's also a wireless backbone. And so they use our access points in these uh, particular uh, deployments. Um, assisted living, as I mentioned before, integrates um, and deploys our EAP to support uh, telemedicine initiatives, network-enabled applications, and connectivity uh, requirements for staff, patients, and guests. Um, again, we're providing that coverage within the assisted living um, uh, facilities. Uh, we're providing um, mainly for the staff is the situation that we run into. It's, it's Wi-Fi needed for the staff. Uh, sometimes in, uh, for patients, and um, they do. You can create guest networking within our devices, and so they do uh, provide that to the patients or the guests that are, are coming to see the patients. And so we see that as a, a big market uh, that we continue to grow in. Uh, some su uh, success stories within those particular areas, such as hospitality, uh, education, and pro AV. Here are some quotes. Um, that uh, we've received from multiple companies. You can actually find this information on our webpage uh, where we have uh, success stories. Um, in the hospitality market, I'll just read the quotes to you. We really, really uh, were, excuse me, really, really happy with the product. There have been absolutely no complaints. In the education market, the competitors' products were not user-friendly, whereas the ingenious system was almost stupid easy. I'd like to comment on that for a minute. Um, so, you know, as Ingenious has grown over the years, uh, the interface hasn't really changed that uh, drastically. Um, it's, you know, we continue to add features, we kind of, we clean up the interface, uh, but the, the functionality in the, in the interface, where everything is placed on the interface, uh, we, we try to keep that uh, the same. Um, I, I tell a lot of our customers, if you're able to uh, configure a off-the-shelf router, for example, uh, you shouldn't have any problems uh, configuring our, our devices. In the Pro-AV market, the reliability and performance of the enterprise class wireless networking solution at a lower, uh, at a lower uh, price point. So as that goes back to um, our control over uh, the components that we receive, the manufacturing processes that we put in place uh, to really create a 
um, a rock solid enterprise class product at a very uh, low uh, low price point. Um, but these are some of the success stories that we've had with our customer base. Okay, so let's discuss the EAP um, product family. EAP, for, uh, to, to let you know, stands for Ingenious Access Point. Um, you'll see that across the industry, I, we've noticed other, uh, our competitors are starting to use the EAP line because it's been around, you know, uh, that part number uh, within their uh, part numbers because it's, this has been around for so long now. Um, other people are, are, are starting to take notice. We have a, a comparison, a large comparison of um, access points. Um, the earlier version, which is the EAP300 and EAP350, these are 2.4 gigahertz devices. Quite honestly, these devices are deployed in, um, in some residential, um, but as probably everybody uh, on this webinar knows that um, if you're deploying Wi-Fi today, you want to uh, you want to deploy a dual band, meaning 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, into a lot of the applications that are out there, such as the EAP600, the EAP1200H, the EAP1750H. The EAP600 is a dual band device. Uh, this has probably been the most popular access point we've had up to date. Uh, the EAP1200H is actually growing rapidly. Uh, the EAP1750 has been very uh, popular, but the growth has been in the EAP 1200 series, uh, just because of the price point. Uh, the end user, at the end of the day, is getting an 11 AC product. Uh, the 1750 is also 11 AC, but uh, the price point is just a little bit different there. Um, but uh, the growth has been really in the EAP 1200 series. Uh, uh, so just uh, pay attention to that particular device. Uh, so specifically on the EAP 1750H, the 1200H, and the EAP 600. Um, and I just recognized a error on the MSRP pricing. Um, so the EAP1750H is $195 at MSRP. EAP1200H is $129.95. The EAP600 is $119.95. Obviously, when you're working with Microcom, you're probably going to get the best price that's out there. So um, you want to contact your sales rep to, uh, to get that pricing uh, from them. Um, so these devices, uh, the 1750, the 1200 or 11 AC, um, and the 600 is uh, 11 N dual band. Again, uh, 600 has been very popular, uh, large growth in the uh, 1200 H series, and it continues to grow uh, much faster than the EAP 600 was growing when it first came out. All these devices are high powered, they support fan steering, um, fast roaming. They're 802.3 AT compliant. So any PLE injector, PLE switch will power the devices up, um, no problem whatsoever. As long as it's compliant, our devices will work. There's no uh, proprietary, uh, there's no need for proprietary, excuse me, PLE switches or uh, PLE uh, adapters. So you don't have to worry about, you know, going into a particular uh, deployment and um, worrying about, oh, do I have the right equipment to, uh, to work with this PoE switch? As long as it's compliant, uh, you're fine. Secure guest network is another feature. We have 16 SSIDs. It's basically eight SSIDs per band, meaning eight on the 2.4 gigahertz and um, eight on the um, 5 gigahertz. We have SSID to VLAN tagging. We also have bandwidth shaping, which is not mentioned here. All these devices have an inner internal high gain omni antenna, and um, it's a low profile kind of design. Um, you may or may not know, but Ingenious was probably the first manufacturer to come out with this smoke detector looking access point. So if you like that design, um, that's great. But if you don't like that design, we're, we're sorry. We, we started that kind of that trend. but. Um, uh, it, it, I want to say it started with us with that particular design. So product key benefits, uh, ingenious do-it-yourself uh, simplicity. So we have anywhere from a ceiling mount, desktop, outdoor, or a point-to-point -point solution for our customers. It's very easy to use and it's very affordable, as you may or may not know. The, uh, the, the GUI is very intuitive. Um, we have anybody you know, that's installing on a boat to within their apartment or their home to large hotels or boutique hotels, install it 
uh, more for a larger uh, crowd base or even uh, in schools. So the, the product ranges uh, because of the price point, I believe, and the features and the intuit intuitiveness of the GUI, it falls in a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different types of um, um, users out there can use this particular product. So anyone can use it anywhere from a novice to uh, an expert. Um, we also provide a uh, lot of technical support, so you always have to keep that in mind, where the support is coming from. Again, we have a line of technical support, customer service support, and we have our field applications engineers uh, to support you um, if you run, in, run into any problems. Um, so post-sales or even pre-sales, so we're, we're here to help. Uh, we do have fast roaming. Um, you know, that question comes up a lot. Um, all of our devices support 802.11R, 802.11K standard support. Um, access point supports, all of our access points uh, support RSSI threshold, which allows you to change the threshold of when a device is being dropped off and then handed over to another device. So that's within the access point to actually help that process along. Um, you do not need a controller to do the fast roaming piece. Um, as long as your devices are compliant with 11K, 11R, and most devices are nowadays, um, your, your, uh, the devices will roam uh, fine. It's only when you get into very oversaturated um, access deployments um, and interference that you start to run into problems and you have to tinker with the uh, co uh, configurations to get things working properly. So just a quick short video of what that is. So you have a deployment of three access points. As the cell phone or tablet moves from one room to the other, it's moving from one access point to another as the signal starts to go away and then strengthens. It jumps from one access point to another access point. And that's basically with the help of 11R and 11K standards. Band steering, uh, uh, it's another feature. All of our dual band access points um, have that feature. It basically takes a dual band device like the iPhone 6, iPhone 7, iPhone 5, which operates on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And the access point will actually tell the device um, I want you, or you configure the device to tell the client device, like an iPhone, to, uh, I want you to uh, steer or connect to the 5 gigahertz because it's uh, much, uh, it's less congested, it's more efficient, there's more channels, there's uh, less overlapping on the 5 gigahertz side, and we, I want to put you on that band rather than the 2.4 gigahertz band, uh, so the overall end user has a, a better experience at the end of the day. Um, all of our devices, I, as I mentioned, support PoE and PoE Plus. Um, so these devices can be plugged into 802.afat compliant devices such as PoE switches and PoE uh, injectors. Obviously, we want you to use our injectors and our PoE switches. Um, by all means, uh, contact your microcom um, um, uh, representative um, in regards to our switches. Our switches are actually doing very, very well with a lot of our customers. Um, I would say the growth period for the switches took a little bit longer. Um, it took us a little while to gain um, basically the respect or, you know, um, the rapport with our customers to say, yes, we do a switch. The switches uh, work really well. So. Uh, uh, if you, if you get a chance to test one out, please do. Um, um, they're doing very well for us right now. So, uh, Another thing that we support is, uh, as I mentioned, six, 16 SSIDs. Basically, the broadcast name, you can have up to 16, 8 per SSID. Um, the importance of that really comes really into maybe if you're doing a guest network or if you're in a uh, small business or even a large business, you can segment the, uh, uh, the traffic uh, per SSID, such as you have an accounting group or, and you have a sales group. Um, that's where those SSIDs, the different SSIDs, um, really help out. Uh, to kind of support the multiple SSIDs, uh, you have traffic shaping. So I'll give you an example. If you have an accounting group and a sales group, you can create two SSIDs. One says accounting, one says uh, sales group. That, those names are being broadcasted across 
the Wi-Fi network or the Wi-Fi um, or the signal is being pro broadcasted out to the client devices. If I'm in the accounting group, I'm going to connect to the accounting Wi-Fi cloud. Um, with traffic shaping, I can actually say the accounting group gets 30% of the bandwidth of my 100% bandwidth. In the sales group, whoever connects to the SSID will get 70% of that bandwidth. So you can actually uh, dictate what, how much bandwidth uh, per SSID those clients would get. Power over Ethernet. So that, that, that's in regards to our access point um, kind of solutions, or uh, specifically our indoor solutions. Um, now for our PoE injectors and converters. We have uh, two available uh, PoE injectors. That's the EPA 5006 GAT and the EPA 5000 G or 6 GP. The only difference between the two is the GAT is actually AT compliant. The GP is not compliant. There's a pricing difference there. Um, so you're you're getting a better price for a non-compliant PoE injector. Uh, these PoE injectors will work with all of our the Ingenious product. Uh, it will most likely work with other products that are out there. Um, we just haven't tested all those other products, but there's a high probability that this device would work in a lot of the different scenarios. Specifically with Ingenious, it will work, uh, but with other devices, we're not sure. The GAT are pay paying a little higher price, but this is compliant. It will work with any compliant device that's on the market today. Um, this supplies 30 watts. This particular device provides 32.6 watts, I believe. Um, and then we have the EPD4824, which actually converts uh, 48 to 24 volt. Uh, so you, if you do have a proprietary device like our ENS202 or EMH202 um, uh, or ENS500 uh, or our ENS500EXT, you can use this converter when you're communicating with to a PoE switch, as an example. So we do have the converter. Um, the retail price on that is 29. So um, we do have these particular accessories to support our different devices. And at this point, I'll open it up to Julie for any questions. Thank you, Brian, very much for that wonderful presentation. And it looks like we do have a couple of questions for you. So I'm going to read some off to you. Sure, I'll try to answer. Um, okay. Um, let's see. How do um, excuse me? How does one get a hold of engineering customer support? Engineering customer support. It would probably uh, the best bet would be to contact us through um, uh, through email. We always say emails first. Um, that way, it gives our groups to uh, prioritize the emails as they come in. Um, and understand kind of the problems that uh, the, the customers are experiencing. So I would say emails uh, the best. And what I can do, Julie, is I'll send you um, our support um, email, and I will also send you our support number, so you can always call in. Um, that call will actually probably go to um, our customer service staff, and there may be a response uh, probably by email. Um, and or call. So it just really depends on the nature of the problem or the uh, complicated, how complicated the problem is. But it can be either through email or for, uh, through phone. So I can send you that information. Terrific. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. I've got the next question for you. Um, it says here, I see you are that, I see that you are CWNE certified. Can Microcom Technologies help with CWNA and CWTS portions of those events? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand that question. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. So we have two field applications engineers that are CWNE um, certified, and they've, they've gone through all the classes, everything that you have to do to become um, uh, certified or, you know, uh, certified within those uh, programs. So um, I don't I don't know how to answer that question, quite honestly. I mean, I would have to talk to those particular people to see if there's something that we can do there. But um, Julie, if you can email me that question, I'll try to get the the appropriate or the the correct answer for that. I got a notation here. It says that you did answer the question. So okay. the, the okay. person who asked that said, "Okay, thank you. That's cool." Okay, got it. Okay, terrific. Um, 
let's see here. I got another question for you. It says, um, clearly I cannot outbid Ingenious on Ingenious Gear and need to know um, that the partner will receive credit over the manufacturer. If in fact there is a bid that's kind of going against each other. Does, is that something you can address? So, so if I understand correctly, so Microcom is bidding on a particular opportunity and, and Genius is bidding on a particular opportunity? Is that what, do I understand that correctly? Uh, I, uh, hypothetically, yes. Okay. So typically that shouldn't happen. Um, the only way that would happen is we do have demo, a demo program that provides 50% off of MSRP, but that's a limited, that's a limited supply. And that's on a particular uh, product, right? So if there's a customer that's never used this and they're interested and they contact us and they said, oh, I just want to try the pro product out, and we give them a window of, you know, 30 days, they can try the product out uh, within 30 days. And if they don't like it or they can't use it or it doesn't fit their needs, they can send it back. Uh, so we do have a demo program in place, but typically we're not bidding against Microcom or any of our partners, really. That I'm aware of. If that is the case, if you do run into that for whatever reason, I would contact uh, probably Ronald Dennis. He'd be the point of contact, um, and just I would bring that up if you're running into that. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, looks like I've got one more question here. Um, let's see. Does Ingenious sell directly to end users? Um, <laughs> if I have a oh, go ahead. That sounds like a similar question. <laughs> uh, but it says, if I have a customer that I, let's see, that I'm quoting in Genius, it is the same question. Okay, okay, I just got clarification. That's kind of the same question. Well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me clarify. Okay, let me double check that I don't have any more questions for you, Brian. It looks like we are good. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you so much for your presentation and for answering those questions. And I'd oh, like to also thank everyone for attending today. And if there are further questions, please feel free to contact your sales rep, or you can email us at sales at microcomtech.com. And if you wish to view the products mentioned or shown today, please visit us at www.microcom.us. And please remember, this webinar presentation was recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. And if you'd like to reference it again, you can certainly view it on YouTube. Brian, thank you very, very much for everything, and uh, I appreciate um, everyone's attendance today. And everyone should have a terrific day. Appreciate it all. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye now. Yeah.